traveled to Accra February 1st this year because we also heard that the Aboriginal owners of Accra, the Gal people, are also Benin people. So we wanted to confirm if that was true because probably those, they left about 800 years ago, much earlier before Akala had left, down to this part of the, the world. Uh, we got there, we had the interaction, they actually played one of their ancient songs that uh, that actually explained the day they left beneath how it was and all that. So, but one other thing they were saying is that there, there are also controversies that even dissuade them from that historical truth. So, to them, now they have said that we are from Benin, but Benin themselves are from Europa, so that already means them Europa. So, well, it's very basic because we're still on about identity issues. Uh, because um, some of us are one of the highest authority when it comes to Benin historical matters. I want to make it clear here to our brothers here that first and foremost, um, Benin's a relationship with the Ife people, not your back. Obviously, FFK came out and said that Yoruba shouldn't also be the identity name for the Southwestern because it's derogatory. And so, just like what the query means to the Yoruba people now, that Yoruba is a derogatory word. Uh, first of all, the Benins have an historical relationship with the Ife people. Just like the Wo also have an historical relationship with <coughs> the Warren, they had no structured leadership. One of our sons was El Zaid. All right, transverse to that part of the world and became the effect structure team, which they call Oduduwa. And uh, in order for we to substantiate facts like a uh, Yoruba still does not know what Oduduwa means over here. So uh, at one long in time, the father of that Oduduwa passed on and there was a vacuum of leadership. So the Benin people went back, having heard that the hair apparent is in some way in Ife, and he has to return back to sit on the throne of his forefathers. All right, he could not come. Instead, he sent one his favorite child, or Romania, back to Benin. So Yoruba's now came out and said that there was a time in Benin where we had no king, so we went to them to beg for a king. And that king is called a Romeo. I don't know whether you understand these two discrepancies. The Benins have never disagreed at one point in their issue that we never went to Ife. But we always said that the boy or the child 
that came with us from Ifo Romeo. His father is a Benin man. And the Yorubas doesn't want to talk about Oduduwa and where he came from, other than the fact that he fell from heaven. All right, because <laughs> when you don't have facts to back up history, you start to propagate, you start to give mythological identity to a real person. So I think that's what happened. First, I want to make it clear that um, uh, the other relationship that the Benins and the Yorubas had was that we gave them their first king, and in return, uh, they are, the first king, who was the Oduduwa, brought his son back to Benin that started the second dynasty. Otherwise, everything that Yoruba has in terms of almost all the structured kings of Yoruba ancestry traces their ancestry to Oduduwa. It therefore means that most of the prominent kings in Yoruba land ancestrally Benin. All right, so uh, I want to first of all establish that because by the time we are talking about how Akalaka left Benin, and then uh, some people said, okay, fine, Akalaka, yeah, the Benin man, but the Benin themselves are Yoruba. So I want to first of all establish that we have had a structured monarchy for a period of 835, four years before Yoruba ever had a Duduwa. So and we had 31 kings before Duduwa ever appeared in the history of Yoruba. So I wonder how a people who have close to 900 years of history, structured leadership, goes to a foreign land to take a people who had no leader to come and lead over them. So it just doesn't make sense. So uh, Benin's other than we gave them would do one. Benin's don't have any other relationship to do with the Yoruba people. So first, I needed to establish that because I seen some um, of our brothers argue on Facebook that so Benin coming from Yoruba and all that. So I wanted to pull that first. Now, Benin, as our brother said, is one of the largest empires in this part of the world. Of course, he mentioned Togo. Actually, it got, the empire got to Ghana. Alright? Uh, it terminated at the mount of River Volta. So when he stretched it down from River Volta down to River Focados, Baeza, it's almost taking half of the entire West Africa. So our ancestors dominated almost half of the entire West Africa. So that's how mighty we have history. And it's in history we should be proud of. We shouldn't be sharing away from that history and connecting our history to evils who don't have history to brag about. They don't have history. They're trying to force this old Inri priest, some set of priests who were never really kings, who never had a kingdom, not think of having ever to build an empire. So these are some of the things that we must look critically. We understand that for whatever the British <coughs> structure of this country <coughs> to favor some ethnic nationalities as against us. The only crime we ever committed as a people was that when the British, the foreigners, were invading this part of the world, we are about the only tribe that stood against them and said that you are a foreigner, you can't take <coughs> to us in our land. And so because of that, they never forgave us. So some of the mili militias that was used to conquer Benin, Yorubas were part of the military forces that was used to conquer Benin. The Asas were also part of the military forces they used to conquer Benin. So in order for them to entirely submit the very history of our ancestors, they had to remove that power in a way and put it in the hands of their <coughs> allies. We are not their allies, we will never be. And so they now give them the tag of majority. But we are trying to bust their lives by identifying all these Benin people who left for different historical reasons. It could have been that the house was not favorable. Uh, obviously, if the house is too big, they are bound to be quarrels. And when they are quarrels, you just pack your load and leave. It's a good thing. If Akalaka had not left, uh, Benin Empire would have gotten to this part. So it's actually a good thing that some of these great warriors left for different historical reasons to so establish a country of their own. So it is good for the expansion of the Benin ideology. So I am more than just being excited to be here, to be able to tell all of us that we must find ways to break that 
barrier of differences. I think that's what the British did to us. They tried to create barrier. Oh, you are from a Edo state. You're from River State. Automatically, um, even if an Igbo man is in River State with you, the Igbo man seems closer to you than your real people in a Edo State. So, creation of regions and creation of states was a systematic way the British used in creating divisions amongst uh, ancestrally connected people like us. So, we are more than excited because sometimes um, uh, some persons come out online and say that we are not being, even if we know that in reality they are. But because of them, um, it is easier for you to not identify with the so-called majority tribe and then to not identify with the so-called minority tribe, who in real sense is not minority. So I'm going to prove here that in real sense the Benins are not minority. All right, it's just that we have Benin in in Moronha version, then we have Benin Benin Bangshon, then we have Benin Asan version, we have Benin Ekbeye version, we have Benin in part of Ishakiri version, we have Benin in Urubo, we have Benin in Usoko, Isoko, we have Benin in Degema. We in Degema November last year. We well received their proud Benin people and they are very, very proud about it. We, we, we've been to Ika, we've been to Anima, and we've had fellowship with kings, Iseluku, Onichaobo, and all that. We have fellowship with some of their kings. They all testify to their Benin. Now, even cutting across to the West, the old Benin Empire had a boundary with the old Oyo Empire at Otun, present day Ekiti State. So, Ekiti, it's almost the boundary between Ekiti and Kwara State. So, that means almost the entire Ekiti State down to this way was all controlled at one point by ancestors. So we had Ondo, Ondo, the crowd, Edo people there. Yeah, there are some Yoruba influences and all that. But a lot of population in present day Ondo state still attested to their Benin origin. So obviously Lagos, we founded, ancestors founded and owned a co. It's um, they are deception. They're trying to tell us that um, um, there were people who settled there. And the Benin people came there to fight them and remove them from the land. That wasn't true. My argument is that what was that name of that land before the Benin's named it Eko, which is the original name. So, and what was the name of the war? When you fight war with Aborigines, there was supposed to be a recorded event that led to that war. No such war, there wasn't a formal name. No record that the Benin's met people there. The only record that we have is that when one of our ancestors, who was a seafarer, trained in Portugal, or Barubwa, when he got there because he was expanding the, the empire through the coastline, he was the one who expanded the empire certainly to uh, Ghana. Uh, he met, uh, he, he needed, because the house was not very far, Benin was very far off, he needed to establish a camp so as to station part of its, uh, its, its, its military wings to further expand the, the empire uh, coastline westward. And eventually, definitely it wouldn't have been called a camp. What the Benins call camp is a coup. All right, so which is the original name for that place, Lagos. So these are more than facts and proofs that one way or the other, we are not minority. That's why that <laughs> should be a focus, that we are not minority. We can only be minority as a people if we start to segregate ourselves just the way it was designed by the British to separate us into different ethnic nationalities. While we maintain our present ethnic nationalities, we must associate with what is most important, blood, all right? Where we ancestrally come from, because that is exactly where our history starts from. And they're trying to tell you that Akalaka is an we said no, it isn't. <laughs> but the only difference is that since this name has passed through years of history, they are bound to be a little twist of names. The only thing that was missing is the L and the N in Venice, Akanaka. All right? Akanaka means something precious. That's what the Benin calls something precious. So you 
must have been a very precious warrior to so one of the other. <laughs> <laughs> so and so and that's why. So uh, basically, uh, the second song, uh, Opa. All right, we have a term called um, Opa, 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 and we have a term called Opa in America. Uh, yes, in Benin. In Benin. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably that second song would have been named from the hometown which we believe he came from. Uh, came from that song. So one of these days when you guys, one of us you guys, yeah. will take you to your official community, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that you can familiarize them. Yeah, historical fact. We are not. We are not going to back on on propaganda. We are not going to back on on a recent. Uh, British creation. We're going to beckon on something that has existed for more than 400 to 500 years. We're going to beckon on facts. Um, it is not a time where people can separate us because they believe that they are majority of, or they believe they have an agenda that doesn't go beyond the figment of the imagination. The real deal is actually us and not them. And we must understand that until it was the conquest of our ancestors that gave birth to Nigeria, the conquest. If Benin was not conquered, there wouldn't have been in place a country called Nigeria. So inherently, we give birth to Nigeria. So, and we have tested sovereignty for more than a thousand seven hundred years as a established country before we lost our sovereignty in the year eighteen ninety seven. So, a group of people who doesn't even know what the country looks like, call me anyway. It's not recorded that Ibo ever had any sovereignty. They never had leadership, a structured leadership. When you don't have a structured leadership, you can't have a place called a country or a nation. So for ancestors had a country and nation, structured, then we, we perfected monarchical government for a period of almost 2,054 years and counting. And it is in that light that we have been a sovereign nation until we lost our sovereignty in 1897 to the British. So we understand what the country should look like. And we are supposed to be the one to tell those who doesn't understand what the country should look like, how a country should look like, not the other way around. It's just like a, a, a two years old baby telling a 70 years old man what old age or experience of life is. And we must tell them, not with quarrel, not with propaganda, but with the truth, that while we were sovereign, why we will come together as a people, when we come together as a people, that is when we can really see the beauty of being together, of the, of the beauty of having to build a nation together. So it is possible in future, we are envisaging it. We're gonna to work together with IFM. Sure. We're envisaging that when there should be clamoring of the true country, it has to be all the Benin descendants coming together to actually chart a common cause for themselves, not some bunch of miscounts coming online to disturb the peace of an already established country like Nigeria. So uh, I want to thank all of you for this little time, and uh, I like talking <coughs> <coughs> history very Please, well. Uh, can you tell us the meaning of your Okay. <laughs> please, please. All right. This is how it works. This is how it works. Now, if a father in circumstances to give names for our children, it happens, it's still till date. And so that would have accumulated. It's only circumstances that warrant the Benema to give Onayu or Uwiriona. Onayu, this one will not die. Uwiriona, death will not take this one. The same thing, however, you take it. And then um, Uwiriona is actually perfect, pure Benin world. That means death will not take this. So, um, other, uh, because of the fact that they know that we, you are pure Benin people, they try to give you an alien antecedent by making the word equary stick. But it is the duties and lies upon us. FFK came out and challenged the entire Yoruba race that from this day forward, I will no longer be known as a Yoruba man because I haven't discovered what Yoruba means. Al Sakulani Yariba that means treasurers people, people
not straightforward. However, they are not straightforward though. I don't know whether that name actually stuck with them. <laughs> it's affecting them. So he just felt that, yeah, the name has a way of changing people's destiny, that we are not truthful people. So, okay. The only way uh, the name could not affect other younger generations. Let's go back to our original word, probably Aku, or, or more Odudua. But I have a, uh, I still will show that they are so many names. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that Akalaka was a man of, from a community called Oba, all right, who left for the reason of being uncomfortable. He wasn't about the old depression. Even the founder of the, the Warren Kingdom also left. He was a crown prince, he was the next of our village. By virtue of his right as a royalty. But well, there was a problem. He gave a counsel to his father that some very influential nobles disagreed with. And the sworn to his father that no matter what, when his father sojourned, you know, beneath kingship is hereditary, father to son. But they said, We are not going to allow your first son to take this one because. They can, if they can give you an advice as a crown prince, if it comes the other, it's probably going to kill everybody in this kingdom. So who will not allow this? His father knew that if he passes on, his first child will not be allowed to become the next other. So instead, he now told him, be the king beside the water. In Benin, that one means Ogyame. So Ogyame, if you hear Ogyame, yes. you're low worried. Ogyame is not in the Shakiri world. It's a pure opinion. Ogi, king, amen, water. Ogyame. To be the king beside the water in my vast empire, since Benin's not like getting too close to water. So you go beside that water and become a king. So the original kingship title for the kings of war is not Olu, it's Ogyame. The present one, a friend who we were with him three weeks ago, so Ogyame in Kemoli. Alright? When we try to give him the grand patron, of Association of Great Benin Descent three weeks ago. I think the video is out there. And he said, I can't accept that. If my father, the Oba of Benin, is still there, can be the grand patron of an association that is an umbrella to all Great Benin Descent. I said to be a patron for the Oba of Benin. My father is the grand patron. Just like the only of, the only of uh, Ife is supposed to also do to the Oba of Benin, just like a lapping of oil, which is every a lapping of oil is a younger brother of every of our Benin. That is not in dispute. Allah bin Abayo doesn't argue that. Oromia, a Benin prince, came to Benin, gave birth to a son, and left. Went to Oyo, gave birth to other two sons, Ajaka and Shango. So every Allah bin Abayo, the, the two lineage or the two houses that produces every Allah bin Abayo is Ajaka and Shango. And these Ajaka and Shango are younger brothers of Eweka. Who was born in Benin. So every Alafin of Oyo is the younger brother of every of our Benin. So these prominent kings understand, I think we did a press conference recently in Mecca where we were trying to tell the <coughs> owner of Ife that the matter that concerns Oduduwa, he should no longer be discussing it because we understand that every one needs of Ife are not connected to Oduduwa. They're not connected to Oduduwa. So those who are connected to Oduduwa should talk on Oduduwa <coughs> matters not a stranger who was meant to, because every children of Odudua left the house, and I said, oh, only, only when someone who stays at home, a homestay. So, and uh, let me not bother you with all this. <laughs> I love this feeling. <laughs> no, but, but the point I'm trying to raise is that even those ethnic nationalities that tells you, Jack and Jill, of how great they are, were submerged. The questions we ask, I will give you 15 different books where it was stated different times, where Benin defeated every of these ethnic nationalities around. When the Oba of Benin visited the Sultan of Sokoto last day, the last Sultan of last year, last year the Sultan of Sokoto said something. He said, asset politics, asset politics, Oba of Benin's number one. In closed door, in closed door. I was someone who was there actually told me this two weeks ago. He said, aside politics, you are number one in this country. See, because during 
the days of the Sultanate when it was expanding. Only one king stopped. All right? The caliphate of the Fulani was the over And it was not true war, as a matter of fact. I remember the story very well. It was Obadullah, who was the father of Obadullah, I mean, uh, Obada was the post of Calabar. What happened was that he heard that there were some people who were ravaging through the northern part, almost entering his vast empire. He said, I'm not going to give them war. This is not important. But go and tell them that with all their war conquests, they should dig the soil under their feet. Hmm? If they find a red sand, know that it is my territory. They should back up. That was the only message of Adolf sent. And eventually, that is exactly what happened. So when the dog, if you get into almost Auchi, the dog, the sand, it was a red soil, and I was like, okay, this, this is the territory of this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm using the word again. <laughs> this territory of this all-powerful king, and, and they went back. So in reality, politics have made traditional institutions not to know their mates anymore. Otherwise, nobody ever, ever defeated the Benin ancestors in any war. Obviously, uh, we're ravaging Igbo territories. As if, as, that's the quarrel they still have with us. They don't like us because... They said we made a mess out of them, made slaves, sold them as slaves to the transatlantic. Yes, a lot of them emailed me that. Are you not saying that we can never forgive you people for what you people did to our ancestors? I told them that that's imperialism. That's imperialism. If it, if I'm stronger than you, I'll beat you and take everything. They don't say now. That's imperialism. So it wasn't. You can't blame me. You have to blame your ancestors for being for being weak. weak. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you can't blame me, and that's the reality. You can't blame me. All right. So if you were able to beat my ancestors, you would have sold my ancestors as slaves. We defeated you and we sold you as slaves. Not just only them, we sold your of us as well. So that is imperialistic. Now I tell them, tell me any war fought between Benins and Yoruba, between between Benin and Igbos, every other tribes around that we were defeated. Nobody is able to tell. The only one war we lost was to the British in 1897. So it was a blow that was too devastating, you know. The people was used to winning, they eventually lost. So we've been still grieving till recently when GBD came out and said, you can no longer grieve anymore. <coughs> we have to tell the world that the Benin people have to come back in a very united form, and that's exactly why we're here. We're here to tell our Akalaka brothers, our Inwoha brothers, blood brothers, that <coughs> our relationship with them is not created by the British. It's ancestral, it is a bloodline relationship. And we are the very future of our land. And the onus lies upon us for we to take the bull by the horn by taking, by saying that whatever alien antecedent that has been given to us by whoever, we are saying capital rejectamenta to it. And this is who we are, this is who we must accept. And we must come together as one people to chart a futuristic goal for the greatness of the Imura people and the Benin people. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Precious. Precious. Your yeah. death will not take you. Yeah. Do you know what that means? This one. Your foundation. That is why we are strong people. Death will not take us. Death will see us around anyway. Yeah. Yes. You see it? This is this is this is the source of our courage, source of our strength, our power. You see where we come from? You see what you see, you see this lineage of strong warriors, conquerors, people that subdued, people that call themselves majority tribes today. We are winners. We will always be winners. They have never lost a war. Our ancestors have never lost a war. Has they all ever lost a war? No. You see? That is why everything we do, we achieve it. Just like knife and anything we want to do, we achieve it. it is. We told people we would bring in the sensation, we did it. Yes. They doubted us, we did it. Yes. You see why we did it? 
because we are precious and death can never kill our dreams. Yes. Oh. That is why we are successful. You want first? Yes. So, thank you very much for this wonderful speech. Mr. President, you really tried a lot to see how people learn a lot today. I just want, please, to bring up a Q&A session. Question and answers, please don't be shy. Our brothers came all the way from Great Britain to see us. Please, everyone should ask the question. Anything, anything at all, please, now is the time to ask questions. Before it says. Please. I agree to go, but please send to your message. Okay. We have one question. Yes. Don't worry, just go ahead. Hi, Afra. If, you call, if you call, just hand. Ross, yes. I am. Yes. Um, President, I'm so elected for hearing some of the things apart from you. Out there, people are saying so many things, especially the Isoma, we call them Isoma. Somebody like me, no, yeah, I'm one. always out there for them. Then, but there is something, they also, because this is a content, this is a question they always uh, throw to me, which I would also like to put it across to you now. Uh, from the books I've read concerning great uh, Benin Kingdom, I was made to understand that somebody from Onisha was a, a king, was an Oba, which is Iweka. That Iweka is from Onisha. Mm -hmm. okay. That is an man. So that after all, an Igbo man from Anambara was uh, an Oba of Benin. <laughs> <laughs> so please, I would like you to throw more light on this. Okay, all right. That that, that sounds funny. I've heard, I've heard about, I've heard, I've heard one or two persons raise that. You know, these people are very funny people. As a matter of fact, it's it's possible that if that Iweka came from Iweka. Fresh of all, not that <laughs> And how you answer them is simple. You know, Benin kingship is straightforward. Unlike most other kingship, our own is express primogenital, father to son, first surviving son. So what that means is that Iweka Kuna, Iweka's father was a Roman. I think that answers the question. Have yes. yes. So, so because it's, Benin is hereditary from father to first surviving son. Um, that means Ewekar's grandfather is Ogiwa. <laughs> Ewekar's great grandfather is Ogiso Owodo. Okay. These are not Igbos. So. Except they want to tell us that Ugiso Udu was an evil man. Ududuwa was an evil man. Oromia was an evil man. That would make Eweka an evil king. All right? So I think we can move to the next question. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Next question, please. Okay, we have two hands here, please. Um, thank you very much, sir, for your historical insight. Um, my question is, um, over the years, we believe that the uh, people and definitely there will be some kind of a nature in terms of the language, culture, and you know, other um, social lifestyle. For instance, although I know they are taking a very long period of time, definitely most of our the present generation might have forgotten most of those culture and yeah. um, language. Please, can you just uh, emphasize like? Getting to tell us more of those cultures, more of those uh, new cultures that we are uh, in similarity with. Okay. All right. I think that's a very good question. Well, the perfect way to answer it 
They try, you know. We are also on social media. We face the wall <laughs> all the time. And then uh, they try and said, okay, um, you guys said you came from Benin, but your languages are not similar. Your cultures are not similar. True. True. I'll give you a very good example. Very simple, very good example. Um, the Oba of Lagos came out there all the time. But the other Lagos doesn't speak Yoruba. They speak Yoruba. Doesn't. There, there are still some uh, artillery because since it's an offshoot of the other, there are still some concepts of the uh, uh, the, the monarchical evolution of the core people that still retain part of its Benin heritage, but not absolute. Some of the festivals being practiced there, they are more. When you are surrounded by people, for example, if your ancestors have migrated to probably Germany, I'm not going to say 300 years, so at least two, just a hundred years, uh, you're going to be behaving like Germans and speaking fluent German. No doubt about it. All right? And But it doesn't change the fact that you and I don't want our minds. <laughs> so languages are not instruments Robots are sexually beneath, but they don't speak Benin anymore. Alright? They evolved. Isokos are also. Alright? Uh, the Germans are also. Alright? Part of these Yoruba speaking people are also in Kaled and several other places in Yoruba. Yeah. They are also Benin people. I told you about Ga people. They are also Benin people, but they don't speak these languages anymore because your immediate environment tend to have more influences than your long-term environment, all right? It's even a cultural thing, all right? Now, there was um, a medical doctor, Dr. Aishene Hagosa, he's an historian, and uh, he told me some, some time ago that the Benins, they're very tall people, very tall people, huge, tall. We would take, uh, we take uh, preferences on being physically built in the whole. He said, but we're not going to get tall. He said it was just because one of our cuisine got missing. And uh, yeah, one of those ingredients, whether pepper or not, but in this case, salt. Now, what the old beans were making as salt was a dried plantain back when you peel that one. So they'll dry it, all right? Uh, they'll dry it, then now mash it, and that becomes powder. That's their salt. Until one of the other Uruguay went in, in traveling through the sea, now introduced salt about 600 years ago. So he was actually taking a DNA sort of sample. He's a retired medical surgeon and said that that's where that particular cuisine that was added to our food, dietary pattern, affected <coughs> our height. So it happens that if something else, as minute that was introduced or something <coughs> that had a general effect on you, and eventually other future generations of the being, we're not talking about being surrounded by every other ethnic nationalities for over 500 years. I give 50 years, if you stay in Benin 50 years, you have you have almost lost everything that is in I know you are ancestrally Benin, but you now begin to behave like us. I think that's exactly what has happened. Now, but what I can okay, okay. assure you, you, the ancient... Okay. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. The ancient, while GBD will be working with IFM, is that because we have not made practical move to study the present culture and traditions of the Umura people, their languages will not be able to do comparison and differences between 
these two ancestrally connected people. Until you start to speak your own to me frequently, and I begin to hear words, and I begin to say, ah, that thing you said, see what it me for Bino. In all your festivals, if we begin to attend it frequently, we will not begin to see touches. You, I'm so certain that there are still touches of the traditions and culture Akalata brought from Benin to Nibo. But they have not been a concerted effort to cultural uh, study. What I call cultural study, I, I come to Imuroha, I, 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 if there's a festival going on, I sit down and see how it has been displayed. When we went to a fair, there were, uh, I was then, the years in Lobo was there, like, I, I delivered a lecture publicly. I think it was the official <coughs> inauguration of Ujubani and Bay that brought Professor Duluwa. I was there, I delivered a lecture. And in, when, before I started to deliver the lecture, um, they brought about four masquerades. And two of that masquerade dresses exactly like uh, a kokonute. We call them a kokonute masquerade in the beginning. Exactly. And I told them that these two masquerades are carbon copy of the masquerades we have in Benin. That are you sh are we sure that these masquerades are not from Benin? <laughs> so they said, no, not actually from Benin. <clears throat> that probably when Akalaka was living, he had the concept of how this masquerade was, and he was able to give them that concept. That's because we just spent one or two days with the Ekpaya people. So if we were able to do that with our people here, we would be able to see similarities in languages, similarities in our cultural practices, and they will now begin to explain all these things out and use it to build a more stronger relationship that we ought to have built even years before that. I don't know whether you understand. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry. To, add, okay. Sorry. to add to what my team here has just said, now when you're talking about um, the similarities between the Benin culture and the Warona culture, you should also um, take into cognizance <laughs> that Akalaka had other children, Ogba. Yeah. And if you look at the Ekbeye people, the Ogba people, you would pick some things that would clearly indicate a Benin ancestry. Mm -hmm. When a vehicle came into the land, an Ogba man sat with us and we got talking. And I told him, uh, You guys are Igbo. He said, mm, Bro, no, no, we're not Igbo. We're from Benin. I said, Really? He said, Yes. He now said, Our traditional ruler, even, is called Ogba. Now, that's definitely not connected to Igbo in any way. And these are people who are in rivers here calling their traditional ruler Oba. He also told me, he said, the first son, I think he said in his place or in one other river riding um, nationality here, he said the first son is called Osaru. Osaru, which is a pure Benin name. God has done it. He said, When we get to sit down more and bond more, we'll identify more of these similarities and have stronger, authentic arguments, not based on propaganda. Because some of us here are Puritans. If we are not related, we will tell you we are related, but we know we are. And we should build on our unity. Thank you. Uh, I think this uh, motto. After the son gave birth, he, the one he gave birth to couldn't talk, yeah. so he sent a gift to yeah. that one. After, when that gift, when that uh, broke, something like a pebble broke, Nas spoke. Uh -huh. So as he spoke, that's where the 
maybe maybe what or something like that. So some of those things are rusty to us. We now that know some of these things is rusty. Is there a particular document or a book that will help those coming at our back or maybe our children when we start getting them to learn these things? So it will not what you're being doing, what you're doing now will not face that or go. And secondly, is there a regular kind of meeting where GBD try to, or national meeting where uh, GBD carries a cross or spread his shoulders round so that these persons, like we, the normal people, would also come and also familiarize ourselves so that it will help also to give us that sense of belonging? All right, all right. Thank you very much. The first one, <coughs> yeah, there are a lot of documented works on some of these things, but it's largely inadequate, I must, I must admit. Not the relationship between Benin and Ife. That one is very largely adequate. I don't want to dwell on that one so much. Um, when we went to Ga, we met with the apartment in the Ga market. I told him, His Majesty, that um, we are here to, first of all, tell you people that uh, we are all connected, which he said, yes, we are. I said, the second phase is for we to set up academic committees between Benin and the Gulf people. That's exactly when I delivered a speech to the Olu Award. That's exactly what I told him. I said, yes, the history of the Benin connection with the Shekiri people is a very straightforward thing. They don't get to argue that. Therefore, however, we stay inadequate. There should be more research that has to be done. So what I am proposing, uh, I also propose it to Professor Dula Apa, the President General of Zubankubaya, that it's high time that every of these ethnic nationalities that traces their ancestry to Benin, we should find a committee that will set, will set up a more like a research joint committee. joint committee to put heads together to write a robust academic work documenting the internal connection how these ancestors of these people left Benin so that we can have a robust history like an encyclopedia that we can give to the future generations to learn from so that they don't follow the path that we are following because the path that we are on now is a very difficult one. We are trying to make that proper correction because if we miss it now, we might have the future generations that will agree for them to be called evil. Based on hearsay. Yes, based on hearsay. So we must put things together. I agree. Some of this history are not in, are inadequately documented, but the onus now lies upon us with the scratch of ideas of history that we still have remaining to put a more elaborate and a complex uh, uh, history together so that uh, the future generations can have something to back on. So um, I think that's the first question. Oh, was it the second one? The, the second one was. Second one was a general meeting. Where okay, the general meeting. Well, obviously, I think um, the River State Coordinator of GBD is not here today yes. for breaking communications and all that. I couldn't reach him, but he was supposed to come. I will, I will speak with the president yes. to um, allow him, allow IFM members to also participate in GBD meetings. Because GBD is just a social cultural group that with this more of the history will connect all of us. So that through him, he gets materials a lot from him. He can be able to constantly educate um, every of the moral people that come for that meeting so that we can have a more enlightened people on our connection. So I think there is a, we have a reverse in the DVD, Mr. Kenneth Ogo, he's from Ekbeye, and um, um, we'll find a way for IFM to attend meetings. He probably GBD members to attend IFM meetings as well, so that there can be that strengthening of bond. And by next year, I can assure all of you 
we are not we are going to do something beyond summit. We're going to do something like a symposium, a seminar. It will be two, two, three days. And what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be take, um, uh, inviting professors from different historical backgrounds across this uh, uh, all Benin descendants to talk on how we can bring materials, to talk on our relationship and how we can gather materials to have a robust history that unites all of us. Thank you. Thank you. How many questions? Yes. One, two. Any more after this? Okay, this is two last questions. Please. In our office. Yes. Ma'am. Um, first of all, thank you, uh, President. Welcome to Ima. Ima, America. Yeah. The first thing I would want to ask, I would want you to, um, I would want to bother you to help us spell the unique version of Ima.
is not an ancestral home base <coughs> for anybody. Um, what, what, what it means is that nobody is ancestrally from that quarter. You could be from Oba. All right? If you have a function in the services of the palace, you'll be moved to that quarter. Obelaka. All right? So we believe that the parents of Akanaka could have given birth to him around the Obelaka area, both from ancestrally from Oba, the information that we have. So that's why he had to name his second son, obviously, Ogba. Ogba. But we call it Ogba. Just the same spelling, but just different pronunciation. Now, the third question is tricky. But however, I'm in the midst of my people. You know, there are things we don't say. But we cannot keep secrets from our people. The Benin language in the old was ascribed as sacred. On no account should a foreigner who is no who is not of Benin descent be allowed to speak the language. It was sacred. The language of the Ugisus. It is still a common problem that they have dealt with. That our language speaking still revolves around just Benin. It was termed as a language too sacred to be spoken outside the boundary of the Benin lands. So when any Benima lives, he knows that custom of not teaching outsiders the sacred language. So they tend to use it and imbibe the languages of their neighbors because there is no abomination when he speaks it as a Benima, but there is an abomination when he teaches that language to those who are not beneath. So it was because of that, those who left beneath preferred to imbibe the languages of their neighbors, of their neighbors rather than the languages they have. Because of the sacredness, you know, uh, beneath is still, there's a popular saying, as I said, we're doing it. Right. You get to a do. Far. <laughs> <laughs> and we are the major reason that our monarchy, our traditions and culture is still held in high esteem mm -hmm. is because of so much sacredness and secrecy mm -hmm. till date. So this is one of the stories you should know. Because you know, Benins are the most powerful people on earth. So they cannot phantom a foreigner the same language with them. It was an abomination. I don't know whether you understand. So there was a law, an outstanding law. When you when you eventually for whatever historical reasons, for whatever truth that transpired that made you wrong and all that, or left voluntarily to establish your own plans and all that, you must not allow anybody. You must not teach anybody your language because it's like a secret language that we must use to connect. The foreigner must not learn our secrets. Now there's a parable encoded in Benin. Ginozekala zeka. Ginozuduga zudu amazevo hawi. What that means? I'm going to explain. If you are an Eka speaker, speak Eka. If you are an Udo speaker, speak Udo. If you don't speak your language, you're more like a foregone person. Now that means you cherish the sacredness of language. We will not allow you to speak as. We will not also take yours from you. That was why every single kingdom that we need conquered will never enforce our language. Otherwise, the entire southern part of Nigeria would have been speaking Bini. But there seems not to be any place that we didn't conquer. But however, we understand the sacredness of language. So the only thing 
we understand is that okay, you you want to meet people in their houses, uh -uh, you beat them as down. You still will take their language from them because I understand that the most fundamental aspect of human's identity is language. So, having defeated them in their home, you are not supposed to take that most important part of their culture, which is language. Just beat them, take over their, their leadership. I don't want to understand. Yeah. So, if it was by enforcing of language, however, we quarrel all the time, Charles. Zero, zero. We quarrel all the time that we our ancestors made mistakes yes. Yes. for not enforcing their language. But however, they understood humanity better than us. I have defeated you. I still will take the language from you. That is inhuman. Inhuman. So let me beat this guy. But let me not take his identity from me. You can be who you are. But the only thing, the Oba was just interested. Every year, come and be paying your homage. <laughs> You when you don't, yes, when you don't pay homage, we bring war to you. Come and be paying homage. That's the only thing they were interested in. So we're not interested in taking people's language because our language was also dear to us. So every other people's language, we also knew how dear it can be. Today, now, we now see that just a few years after the British came, sharing southern part of Nigeria, some half. You know, Edo and Delta was under Old Western Region. The, as soon as it was under Old Western Region, the only thing Yorubas wanted to do is to enforce the Yoruba language on us. Yes. The first some part of Omo, the Akuzi, Far Edono, to speak Yoruba. Those people still speak Yoruba today. If you don't speak Yoruba at one point in time, you are not allowed to be a regional translator. These are people who are tribalistic. The same thing, Igbos do all the time. Spend some few years in their house, they want to enforce their language upon you. <laughs> the Benins had 600 to 700 years to do that, yet we never did. Now, power was given, we understood what power should be. Now, power was just given to these people for less than 50 years, they wanted to just tribalize everything. I think that's why Nigeria is not working. Because when you have this set of people, who doesn't seek between, uh, uh, beyond their tribal cycle? You are bound to have country that will not succeed. So, Benin's had a country that was perfect because they understood what leadership should be all about. And every one of us must be proud for being a Benin man. That doesn't take a whole, it won't I'm not an even a person. No. <laughs> so, I just not learning the language, though. <laughs> so, um, Mecca, the, um, Mecca. 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 <laughs> when name Mecca. <laughs> he uses that a lot for me, so I'm, I'm really excited. I think we still have one question. Yeah. So, I'll just, question. I will just take the last question. Yeah. 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 President, I greet you. Thank you very much. I'm by name, Amadi Kishopa C. Mm. That's a lot of people. Amadi is a Okay. Um, my question. I'm sorry, I had to call you short. Um, what was the meaning of that day? Am I right? It's up to yourself. I want to learn your language. Of course. It's not that. 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 So I'm including because all the while I've seen women, but I'm, uh, the greeting is not including them, so I pretend to include all of the women. It's something that I just want to talk to. Because that just when I speak, I really tell me who is there. Thank you very much. All right. uh, my question is uh, this movement, uh, I like it. However, I'm a goal getter. I like the <coughs> books. I'm a supposed reader. And uh, that is where I'm asking. What is the short time and the long term um, goal of this movement? That is one. And um, two, um, as a means of sustainability, we have discovered that one thing about our government is that um, government comes today, uh, when another government comes, it abandons the project or whatever the program is and goes on to another program. As a means of sustainability, I am suggesting this is a suggestion now that we can go 
go into um, where you make mention about uh, the lethal materials as the people. Yeah. Uh, compilation of all of that. Where we can also do uh, a little deliberate intentional uh, action to put that into the educational sector as primary secondary elements of the education so that that can help us to sustain this movement. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, me and Emeka, we have spoken for a while. Uh, we had we had an incredible intelligent ancestors. At the time when the Portuguese came, <laughs> all right, they first visited Benin, 1472. All right, he didn't spend some time. Sequera, Sequera left, and Diabero came in 1485. <coughs> Diabero spent his later part of life and died in Benin and was buried at Wakan. Now, they came with all their sweet talks and ideas. And the other at that time said, I don't understand the ways of these people. In order for me to understand the ways of these people, let me also have my own people visiting Portugal. So the Benins were the first to have an ambassador in this part of the world. So ambassadors were sent. Benin natives to learn an embassy was created in this one. And in turn, the Portuguese also created an embassy in Benin. Diplomatic ties. Me and Emeka will spoke about that there should be infusion of ideas of IFM in GBD and GBD in IFM. The reason is because you talked about short term and long term. The short term goals of GBD. We don't know how Nigeria will be tomorrow. We don't. Whether it survives beyond 50 years, whether it survives beyond 100 years. Should, in case it doesn't survive, the Yoruba national claim of Dudu are going to come, or Dudu are Republic, isn't it? Because we are not united, and that's why some people are just saying, Biafra. Oh, yeah, tomorrow, come here. Go for me. Come here. <laughs> because. We don't, we don't have a concerted <coughs> effort on our own. Now, when we bring, we have identified all 50 ethnic nationalities in Nigeria that have been in ancestry. If we bring all these people together, do you think any Oduduwa, any Biafra will be able to march us in work, in education, in, in every ramification? That could be the long-term goal. But the short term go is we have to first of all put in our consciousness how ancestrally connected we all are. It's only when you are comfortable as an Iwuru and man that you are ancestrally Benin man that you want to do something that concerns Benin. So that is the short term goal education, educating our minds of our connectivity, how ancestrally connected we are. Then after we've been able to consciously educate our minds that we are actually one equal people, then we can't be able to say, okay, fine, let's have one agenda and let's pursue it. With unity, we'll be able to achieve it. That's a long-term goal. Short-term goal, education, long-term goal. Coming and having a futuristic agenda. It could be anything. We are just starting. It could be that we want to declare a nation of ours. Mm -hmm. We don't.